Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Disco Elysium. Where we left last game, we discovered our cockatoo spirit, or spirit animal. It was interesting to say the least. We also gave a random woman in the streets a hug, like a crazy person would do. And uh, everything turned out okay. She didn't call the cops, which would be silly because we are the cops. We're going to grab some more of these little Orbeez to run about north, because they're worth 10.1 rail each. Cape Side Apartments, Martinez Pier. Oh, we have a map now, though. The ad reads, broken window, Dib says windows. Now we can actually see a little bit of what's around us. So, we are here on the waterfront, obviously. We can't actually get to the fisherman shacks or the church yet. We're not permitted to leave this district just yet. We have more things to do here, apparently. We have to wash off the death smell. We have to send the victim to processing. I thought we did that already. Or no, we were going to wait until 9 o'clock and send it tomorrow, right? Because we want to take the boots. The body is still there, correct? Yes, okay. We need to get rid of Mr. Kitsuragi first, though, and then steal the boots. We have to use Kim's shortwave radio to run the number. Let's do that. That's something we can do today. See what there is to discover about this serial number. It's the same thing as last time. We're going to pick up the radio again. Could you run a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me? Sure, officer. What's the number and the make of the armor if you know it? E50, 100, 1000, and the make and model of the armor is the Fairweather T500VE. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully, they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, is an intersol... interisolary? Uh, law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the Moral Intern Diadem, alongside Epis and the Coalition Government. Let's connect back to the 41st. She sighs. Right, please hold. Ten four, come in. He hesitates. Firewalker, over. This might sound odd, but there's a person matter I need to discuss. Okay, Ten four, I hear you. Relay your question, over. Wait, before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. I want to know if you have my badge's description right in your report. Could you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge, but of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revisholian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. Please refer to me with my last name in the future. 10-9, repeat message, I didn't get that, over. Stop calling me sir and just use my real goddamn name, will you? Uh, what, what is it? What can you possibly still want from us? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call him by his name. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive, that's new. Wrap it up and don't indulge his drunken antics. Have I ever told you about my life before the RCM? 10-4, well that's a... Uh, does he actually want something or is he hell-bent on disrupting our work? He's asking if I, he ever told me about his days before joining the RCM. For God's sake, cut the shit out. Tell him to stop wasting time and be a goddamn policeman for a change. Sir, Satellite Officer Vikamir says, I heard him. Any news about my family? 10, uh, excuse me, sir, over. You probably don't want to continue on this road. Just thought you might have heard of them, that's all. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. Let's wrap this up. There's nothing new to experience there. Let's tap on the fuel heater pre-gate, or the preheater gauge. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator perks or jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. Now, now, that's enough fun with the foldable headlights. I know they're not mesmer- or I know they're mesmerizing. They're also fragile. I'm not gonna turn it on for you again. And that's the end of that, I guess. That's all we have to do with this delightful car. What are we going to do now? We're kind of out of things to do at the moment. The victim's tattoos. We can ask around about the tattoo's possible meaning. Probably in this bar area, I'm guessing. Also, I think I need to take my dog out shortly. In fact, probably right now. We'll just pause the video and I'll be right back. And welcome back. Let's do this thing. Let's go talk to some people about tattoos. How about you first? I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? She crosses her arms. Are you the hardy girl? I am not, she says dryly. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. 
Even a mutt, her face stiffens. I'm glad I went to law school. I'm an attorney. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. I just found a bullet in the hangman's head. A bullet, you say? He passed the back of his head. That's mighty curious. Indeed, mighty. How did it get there? The lieutenant is fixed on Titus. He gives you an indulgent look. Well, there are so many bullets in the world and so many heads. He sighs deeply. I guess it's only logical at some point that one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, too, you know, he taps on his right temple. Just statistically speaking, of course. Sire, it'd be an event most dramatic if you were to produce the bullet and dangle it before their very eyes. I'm going to ask you again, why was this in the victim's head? Wow, the little man leans in to inspect the lead and blossom. He's gotten a real evidence bag and all. Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? He raises his finger. I think he was shot in the head as a kid and his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man? Elaine pinches the ridge of his nose. That's a good one. All the goofing around is to avoid lying. It's a technique. Did you guys shoot him? Shitty throws his head back. I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn lets you shoot guns when he's drunk. The little guy looks you in the eye. Better hope he stays sober. No, I meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before, after, during, she spreads her arms. This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Don't worry, we'll figure out this sooner or later. Never been worried in my life, lawman. He crosses his hairy arms, having forgotten about his beer for a moment. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there somewhere. We have a 58% chance... I'm gonna go back for a sec. We're gonna try the chance. If we don't succeed, we'll just quick load. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns. I'm gonna challenge his authority. Here. I failed. I'll try one more time. I really want to make this thing so that we can move on with this particular like part. The circus left town, but the clowns there we go. Are still here. As you look around this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco, does this look familiar? Where have I seen this before? You believe the place was called Precinct 41st. It's also filled with almost exclusively men sitting on desks talking shit and wasting time. I get it, Titus. You guys really are the authority around here, huh? You must be, because you're just like real cops, drinking beer and sitting around with your dicks in your hand. You Lindsay, you got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. Hmm... No, no, I'm drunk on the job, too. I don't give a shit, just like you guys. Speak for yourself, buddy. He puts the beer down. We've been giving a shit for ten years. Martinez was a dump before he put this outfit together. They don't know, man. They weren't here. He turns to you. We had three shootings a week. Kids dead. Fucking graffito everywhere. You cops hadn't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffito removal, he turns to Titus. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. He picks up the beer. Don't let him drink that. One more push, quick. Someone's been raped. She needs counseling. We need to talk to her. Titus, he looks at her. She stops in mid-sentence. That's it, you've got him. He's gonna give up, but on his terms. You wanna talk to her, cop? Fine, I'm gonna let you talk to her, but you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her. Titus taps the chin with his fist. A freight train of pain, buddy. The lieutenant takes out his notes. What's her name? Classy Amando. She's staying here at the Whirling and Regs. Real pretty one. Silvery. Jumpsuit. Blonde. Titus adjusts his cap. That's Amando with a man with an OU. Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs. That can't be her. She knows you drank so hard you forgot you were a cop. We have a low chance of uh, that one. Miss Laurent. Disco dancer. Sure. Why not? You probably seen her around upstairs. He nods. I'm gonna try to keep my cool. Seventeen. Nope. Oh, I did. No, I failed. You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, with your eyes bulging like some wild beast. Your fingers are fidgeting and sweat starts forming on your brow as Titus looks at you oddly. I don't understand what's so cool here. Nothing. He gives you a few sideways glances. We just have a few more questions and we'll be on our way. So what was her relationship with the mercenary? Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her and that's the relationship. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. Thank you. Uh, so this urn, the rape, when was that? He did it before we killed him. He's not going to do it again. He crushes his half-empty beer can. So what does it matter? 
It would help if we established a timeline. Alright, two weeks maybe? I don't know, I need another beer. He turns to Glenn. Here you go, boss. The tall blonde throws him again. Titus cracks is open. So, what's your relationship with her? I know her. He looks around and an uncommon silence fills the room. How well do you know her? A small twitch in the corner of Kim's mouth. He has a hunch about what knowing means. Well enough, copper. We partied. She's been here for a few months. He crosses his arms. He tries to make it sound real casual, but the muscles on his neck tighten. So she's not from around here. You mean Rivishal? No. Our Miss Aran? Or Orane? Orne? Bang of Orne. Disco dancer is an immigrant or a drifter of some sort. Been staying here over the winter. Don't you give her any more trouble, the fat guy puts out. She just had some bad luck, that's all. Shut up, Angie. He slaps his forehead. She doesn't need your help. Titus gives them both a look, and they fall silent. What's with all the silences? It's like these guys don't know how to feel about this. You should keep picking at it. You said you partied. Cool, that's cool. But what did you mean? What do you think I mean? Was it sex? Yeah, pretty much. So you're saying the two of you were close? No, no, we just fucked, that's all. He states matter-of-factly. I'm not going to give you any details if that's what you're after, so put your dick away. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're going to get for now. He's doing a good job here. A commendable performance of I don't give a shit. I think I, I laugh nervously. I think I know her. You don't know her. You're wrong. I do. Not the way I do. Thank you. Well, we'll talk to her. He points his beer can at you. Remember what I said. A freight train of pain. Alright, I'm going to go and see if we can deal with that situation. Also, we have a bouncing thing in our inventory. What is it? We should probably go through some of these other things, too. It's also 1919. We only have to get through two more hours or so, and then we can go steal ourselves some boots. And we will also be able to forge that signature. Two important things for us to do. I guess we can go in here now. Let's knock. Who is it? A woman's voice answered. Her answer is muffled by the door. Tired. Controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door's open. I'm drying my hair. It sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You can sleep around before going up. We can collect her bottles, at least. We'll just tidy up for her a little bit. No big deal. Piles of dirty clothes. A woman's. Hotel bill calculations. Looks like she's had an extended stay. Oh, he wants to talk. Okay. Officer, what was that? What was what? He looks strange when he mentioned the assault victim's name. He looks in the eye. Do you know that woman? Yes. Is there something I should know before we talk to her? I met her in the hallway after I woke up. Understood. You are not in a good shape Monday. She knows I didn't remember being a cop. Okay, that's manageable. I tried to hit on her. Understood. He's stone-faced. It went pretty okay, I guess. It doesn't matter how it went, officer, what else? She noticed I did some pretty crazy stuff before I passed out, that I partied hard, and not very mental healthily. So she overheard you, or did you party together? So this is what it feels like to be interviewed. Got nothing to hide. What if you do, but you just don't remember that you do? You'll get through it. She overheard me listening to music and doing weird things from her room. It's the one next to yours. Anything else? I asked her where we are, what city this is, and maybe even what year, something like that. He shrugs. That's clearly your interrogation technique. Anything else? Well, I didn't rape her. What you're saying is... He says in a low voice, You raped her? No! Then don't ever say that again! There's a pause. Let's, let's move on. Well, we'll be alright, officer. This is nothing. You feel fortified by his assurance. It's gonna be alright. Let's go in the bathroom. I think this is the bathroom anyways. There we go. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Look at the toothbrush. It's been used quite a lot. Medications? Pharmaceuticals line the shelves. Sheet upon sheet and pill bottles next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid. APAP. Eye drops and blood thinners. It's quite the collection in here. Anything of note, he asks in a lowered voice. Search the bottles. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol. Is to pair it all, something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray is labeled Nacra. Nacra, that's used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Nacra, opioid antagonist. Interesting. That's used for diamorphine overdoses. The lieutenant nods and looks at the door. You could say he's on the lookout. How about the pill sheets? Among some foreign, possibly Messian, Messinian, sorry, or Gotwaldian, marked in red blister packs, you find. What? 
do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. We have even odds. I'm not too concerned. Nothing of note, and the further you look, the more arcane it gets. You don't know what the rest of the stuff does. It's locked for now. Do we have any more skill points? Actually, we do. That was what, electrochemistry? We can just try it again. Mm -hmm. This is in which place? Mm, we need electrochemistry anyways, so we might as well grab it. Yeah, the medicine cabinet. All right, let's grab one point in electrochemistry. Then let's try this one more again. We have a pretty high chance. I'm going to save just in case. Because we probably don't want to put too many more points into electrochemistry. There we go. A bright orange bottle with Riptide stamped on it in sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby, that's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. I can just take it in secret. I have a really high chance. Silently, the bottle slides into your palm. Then, as you turn, into your pocket. It feels so sleek and beautiful. You caught it. Here comes the afterburner. Time to put a super detective again. Or time to become a super detective again, Harry. Just put it in your sweaty little hand now. I'm going to sell it. Probably. In the yard below, a corpse lies under the pine tree. Time to go upstairs. Wait, where is the bedroom in her place? I didn't see a bed anywhere. Oh, it's up here. Never mind, I lied. Her place is nicer than mine. The bed has been hastily made. That was a very small area. Leading to outside. Okay. We have a thing. The smell of cigarette smoke in the air. Astromenthol. Cold coffee and an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. Look, a handful of dried white wildflowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. I can try it. The wind brushes them off the roof. They're gone. Oh well, we tried. We had a 72% chance, it just didn't go well. Welcome. Welcome to the roof. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery junk dump shoot and jumpsuit, sorry. An athletic young body built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Nice view you got here. Nice. I don't know about that, officer. She looks north, towards the yard, where the ripe corpse of a man still lies on the ground, spotted with green and purple. You mentioned a cleaning lady. I think I need one. Oh yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell is opened in there. Disco Infernum. They also say that's why the cleaning lady quit. Because of the Infernum. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. I'm a detective from Precinct 57. I believe you have already met my colleague from Precinct 41. The lieutenant steps in. Have I ever? This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I have ever seen in my life, and I have seen a few. Oh yeah, life gets hard, but we go on. The chorus of the 35 single megaphonin, the entire human race, instills you with a, with the fuck it all swagger that prompts one plow into grannies on your morning stroll. Ooh. Um, gotten pretty hard in the meantime, but I go on. Actually, no. How long do you think until the hard wears us down? Oh, I've got a couple good years left on my warranty. She looks down at her body, shimmering in the silver jumpsuit. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man who was hanged. He looks down at the yard. responsible have asked us to talk to you. He looks down at the yard. Ah. Uh. I see. She takes a pensive drag of her menthol cigarette. Be careful. Ask something else first. When you go there, use words like, I hear you've been through something difficult. What's your name, miss, for the record? Classy Amando. Same name as Titus gave you. It sounds Oranese, as does her accent. Her birthmarks are also Oran... Oranye. You don't know why, but Oranye girls tend to come speckled with them. Are you from Oranye? Right, sir. Redford. Republic of Ornye. I suppose you could say that I'm Ornye's expatriate. What is Ornye? A bad memory officer. 
The Republic of Ornier is a democratic nation on the Mundi Isola, north of here, over the sea and across the Pale. It's one of the six major Occidental nations to hold stake in the continued occupation of Revachal, the coalition. People consider it a reasonable superpower. Reasonable? They will make you into a fiscal colony, divert your natural resources, hold patents and shares, but they won't threaten to wipe you out any time, like Revachal did in its prime. A bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lighting, she squints her eyes as if to see them in the distance. Parks, glass, duraluminum. Vertefort is a conference city. It's always autumn there, at night. At least it was for me. What's so bad about that? Nothing, if you're no longer there. How old are you? I'm 28, she takes a drag. What do you do, miss? What's your specialization? Something stupid. What's that? Ornier's lit. Ornier's lit? Ornier's literature. It's what I studied at the university. She raises both eyebrows. What is Ornier's literature about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Ornier's. All national literatures are, only the name of the nation changes. Or, all na national literatures are, only the name of the nation changes. If that's true, then Rivachulian lit would fit you like a glove. Ornier's lit. What do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make money, then? Money is very important. I show her some money. Cool. She looks at the black note in your hand. I made more money than... Or by just being than I have with Ornier's lit. Being what? Many things. A roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Ornier 37. She smiles. Can we look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why's that? Because it's buried in a plastic or sealed plastic bag in an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and an airline ticket. Thank you for your candor. Why? They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. How do I know you've told us your real name? If I were to lie with you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than... Glass... Classe? Amando. It's a weird name. She seems to be telling the truth, sir. I'm pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your passport, miss. Look, officers. She turns to face you both. I like this place, but I don't want to get stuck wandering the city like a ghost after being robbed of my travel documents. I don't want to become an indentured servant in a brothel on Boogie Street, and I don't want my relatives to pay the ransom. There are plenty of other reasons for hiding your documents from the law. That's not why you hit it, though. It's also why I hit it. Why else? He's suddenly very attentive. I'm an unpopular girl, she takes a drag. There are people back home who don't like me. If they show up, I'm in a hurry. The kind of hurry where you can't afford not to find your documents, but don't worry, this has nothing to do with your investigation. What kind of people are these? The ones that don't like you. I would love to change the subject. It's not important unless I'm some kind of suspect. She, raises, she arches an eyebrow. No, we've just come to talk. Ooh, she wipes her brow. Okay, then. Okie dokie, she pours herself more coffee. If any of this makes her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Thank you, that's it for the record. The record? So official. Nice room you got here. Yeah, it's pretty deluxe. What are you doing here? In the whirling in rags. I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? She calculates. About four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in Whirling? Here in Marnais or here in Revachal? Let's go to Whirling first. Because it's the funkiest building in Marnais, and because the other buildings are bombed to hell. You have quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Thank you, put a lot of time and effort into it, she says, without any discernible irony. irony. Technically, the possession of narcotics is legal in Revachal, but you should still reprimand her. It was quite impressive. How did you amass such a horde? With money, sir, she takes a drag. It's not exactly the anti-star-sized caboodle I intended for it to be one day, but it's getting there. The Antistar is or was a, a vespertine rock and roll star who liked to do drugs. He did so many drugs, he eventually mutated into a corpse. <laughs> the collection includes Necra, an opioid antagonist. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, Mist? His tone isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Better safe than sorry, she takes a drag and smiles. You seem to have, among many other things, Preptide. Oh yes, this is one of my favorites. Cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up for 36 hours, she thinks. Not being happy, it cures those ailments. It's just a mirrored speed molecule, basically. That's all as far as it, that goes, then. Actually, cool, I took some for personal use. I show the preptide. Huh? She looks down at the drugs in her hand. Motherfucker took my preptide. Looks like you owe me one, officer. Talking serious corruption here. This does not amount to actual corruption. I can easily log it under a confiscation. Tis, tis, she says to herself with a smile. Rob my common highwaymen. I have more questions. Okay, she takes a pensive drag of her cigarette. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. I need to talk to you about your room again. What are you doing here in Whirling Rags? Wintering, staying here. Why here? Why in Martinez? 
I heard this is the place where washed up disco has been to go. Came to the right place. She looks back at you and nods. Same thing again, we're just gonna go with Revishol this time. Always wanted to see the only city in the world in the worst time of the year. It's a tourist thing. Okay, I have other questions then. They tell us you've been through something difficult. Something difficult, she raises her eyebrow. I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? Were you sexually assaulted, miss? By sexually assaulted, you mean rape. She takes a quick drag, unperturbed. Yes. It's a bit early in the morning for rape, isn't it? Actually, it's evening, miss. Is it? Squinting, she takes a look around. The sun sets in the sea. Long shadows pass over the plaza below. It is evening. She looks into her coffee cup. Time flies, man. So... Were you? Yeah, she draws out the word. I'm gonna go with not raped. I don't wanna say shit or that shit about him. By him, she means, must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they wanna jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more... She searches for the word than Trug's rapable. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery, sexual assault maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Titus asks you to spice things up for us? Pretty much. She cradles her coffee in both hands, warming them. What did happen between you and the victim? We partied. Wait, partied? Where have I heard that before? A lot of partying going on. From Titus about her and Titus's relationship. That's where you heard it. I don't get it. What do you mean, partied? We drank, sir. She takes a sip of her coffee. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We always made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough, and we did enough of them. How did you meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet and calm. Downstairs, she taps on the roof with her 10 centimeter heel. At the bar... He was on some sort of assignment, a military man, as you probably know, had cool, or had a cool, scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that? What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do it. She puffs on a cigarette. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him like he is now. I can't talk about this. I don't know. Hair? Another puff. More nervous. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. What did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing, she thinks, but you probably know all about it. And his role in the strike was what? I think he was working in security detail. He was ex-military, worked for the Wild Pines, and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean, but I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. Why was there a bullet in his head? A bullet? There's a silence. Her brows meet in the middle for a pained frown. They shot him too? I'm not picking up any theater craft, sir. The palace is sincere. They stripped his clothes and they shot him? You mean after they hanged him? I'm confused, sorry. So am I. Were you aware he'd also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I thought he was hanged? I was not present when they did it. I don't know what happened. I just know what they told me and Sylvie, the bartender. This is beginning to get confusing for you, too. And we don't like that. Where was she last Sunday night? Where were you when this happened? Cowering? I was cowering downstairs with Sylvie. How do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests downstairs. She looks at the floor. It's tarred. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. And how'd you meet? Over drinks? It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask you this, but have you had any physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which one? Which one, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. It must be hard for you. I point to the yard. Seeing him there all the time? Oh yes, she says bitterly. I have multiple viewpoints. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. The bitter cringe, it hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. He called us. The RCM. Yeah. Jackpot. The call reporting the hanging. That was you? I made it, she nods. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Revishal, miss. If it's snitching, well, then why do it? Because I couldn't handle it anymore. She takes a drag, her voice thick with disgust. None of these people could. He just kept hanging there. They started stripping him. The voice was disguised. He says, or he asks, clearly wishing to distract her from the image. Did you? I didn't disguise it exactly. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Ow. With nail clippers and I diverted some radio fuzz into it, into the cold wire. You're right to suspect that there might be foul play involved with the broken phone line. And in the process, you broke the landline downstairs. 
did I? She looks into her coffee. Fuck, I didn't mean to do... I had no idea what I was doing. A jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Still, that's pretty clever tempering. Simple and clever, crossing the lines like that. Seems like you had some idea. That was nifty. Thanks. She manages a smile. She looks a bit like a little girl who's been complimented on her bike repair skills. I'll go through all the trouble. I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union was listening. Locals say they have ears in the wires. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir, but if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. She looks away. He won't be hanging there long. We'll move the body to the morgue soon. Are you sure you weren't raped? I'm 89% sure. Does that mean you're 11% not sure? You know how it is. Do you? Do I? Hmm. She flicks a bit of ash away. Maybe you don't. The ash lines on her jump shoot. She brushes it off. There are numerous cigarette burns on those silvery scales. Easy to see now that you're closer. In conclusion, officer, I'm going to go with a mild to medium not raped here. Sounds like something happened and you don't want to acknowledge it. Let me make this 100% clear then, officer. I was not sexually assaulted. She tilts her head. Would I be as flippant if I had been? Well, thank you, telling you. Thank you for telling us all of this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. We should head back downstairs, officer. The lieutenant looks at you. We may have things to discuss there. I have something else before we go. A little thing. She nods. Silvery cigarette fume disappears into her mouth. Volition. A legendary. Look her in the eye. This is not going to work, but... She looks back. Time moves slowly. The triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. We will protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. We will see through deceits. You are shielded. You are wise. You are advised. There are muscles on long white bones that line her limbs just below the silver jumpsuit. What is happening? Nothing. Just time passing. Don't worry. Anything out of the ordinary and you would be notified. Air moves in your windpipe. Your heart beats. You're a detective. Get back to detecting. Am I being beguiled? She presses her elbows against her waist and slowly turns her head. Her hair brushes her shoulders, making a small hissing sound, almost imperceptible. I avert my eyes. The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 seconds. Well, we're gonna have to try that again, because I'm curious. She'll be there till 11 o'clock drinking coffee. Why would you drink- oh crap. Hang on. Oh good, he still wants to talk. Get the rug, you talk to me here. Looks there. like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. His voice is lowered. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they've prepared for us. We just stripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision not to corroborate their story was definitely not part of their plan. Why did she tell us all of that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and, got, and get away with it. I'm not sure she had to lie. I wouldn't have known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. Something is off here. You think so? A shadow runs across his face. She seemed forthcoming. Unusually so. Being forthcoming about some things is a good way to obscure other things. The best liars are always forthcoming. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our investigation will bring us back here soon enough. And that's going to be the end of our video. We're actually a little bit over time. The window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. I run my fingers across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. This window was recently replaced. Looks like it, yes. Alright, well there's something new. We'll figure that out later. For now though, I am going to call it a video. Take care guys. I keep clicking on the stupid and not the stairs. How do I click? There we go. Alright. Have yourselves a wonderful evening, and I'll see you all next time.